Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time I'm back with last Twilight episode 2. I can't tell you how much I love Jimmy's character. Jimmy's character is amazing and I feel that C is interpreting Day so well. Like I'm actually feeling the frustration inside of that man every single time he's being looked at by his brother and his mother. Actually, I didn't really think much of it when I first saw it, but I thought about it a little. And the mother is being a little too careful. Like, as soon as Day started to lose his eyesight more and more, she literally had the impression that that also meant that he can't do anything by himself anymore. Day's problem is that he wants to continue being the person he has been before he completely lost his eyesight. As in 20%, you barely see anything. So, now he has that problem. But he doesn't want that to be a problem because of that restriction he has now that he literally cannot continue being an athlete the mom is seeing this as the reason why day needs to be watched 24 7 as in she does not want to allow this man to do anything by himself anymore because of his blindness and day wants to continue to live by himself he wants to to continue being independent and mock noticed that and he's like you want to be independent you want to be grown you want to continue being the person you were before then start behaving like you still can do that come over here and take your library card from my fingers i'm right here i'm not moving so you can see i'm actually giving you my hand why don't you come ahead and grab it? So I like the dynamic. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. If you want the full uncut reaction, you can find that on my Patreon. The link is in my description box below. And without further ado, let's start. He came, bitch. What do you have, one? Oh, okay. Hold on. Nope. The way she's looking down and... The way she's slowly moving her eyes up to his face is discrimination. This is discrimination on a whole nother level, y'all. This is discrimination. This mom is actually judging this man without actually knowing him. At the age of 17, I started to wear ripped jeans. Like, I don't see the problem just because I have ripped jeans. Like, from the older generation, my mom is like, when I would have those jeans, people would make fun of me because I'm poor. Like, the fact that I dress a certain way has nothing to say about my personality. What vibe does that give off? Just that I wear ripped jeans. What, what horrible vibe gives that off? Like, why are you looking down on me? But honestly... I actually like the view of this because Day was like this man or no one else. Because Day saw that Mock does not care. He does not care about money, as in he cannot be bought. Mock cares about people. As soon as you get this man's approval, he's in and he's willing to give. And that's exactly what Day needs. They need someone to be by his side because sadly he can't do much by himself anymore. But he also wants to have the feeling that he can do things by himself. Like he doesn't want to be 100% dependent on someone. He still wants to feel independent. And Mark literally gives him those vibes. He's like, okay, I'm gonna be by your side. You hired me. I'm here. I'm coming. But I'm not doing everything for you. You want to be independent? I'm gonna treat you like you are. You want to get something? You want some food or something? You try to get the bowl. I'm gonna help you lead your hand to the cereal and you're gonna pour it into the bowl. You want to be independent? I'm gonna be there to help you. But you will have to put in the work too. This mom actually just looking at this man's jeans and she immediately has like a billion questions that she can drop on this man. And sadly, that's reality. I love the fact that this show is so realistic. Just like Wednesday Club, like GMMTV. Me. Like, what are you looking? That's my casual. 
แล้วก็เตรียมผู้เลือกอาหารการกินสบายมากครับผมเป็นมือกับแก้มาจำวงอยู่แล้ว What เดเขาเป็นคนเลือกกินเขากินแต่ของที่ฉันทำ Well then you cook for him ฉันไม่อยู่ Honestly I can't put this woman she's getting on my nerves so much already If your baby day is such a picky eater then you do the food If you're like he only eats what I make him, then you make the damn food. What you coming at me for, y'all? She's a Karen. I feel she's gonna be a Karen. Like you want me to take care of your child, you ensure your son's safety to me, then you better trust me to be capable to ensure this man's safety. You want me to cook for him, and you don't want me to poison his food? Then let me do my goddamn thing. Your son wanted me because he saw the potential and because he saw that there is a connection between the both of us. So let me do my goddamn job. He feels sympathy. I love Mock. I think Mock respects Day because seeing how this man changed, as in seeing how his blindness is starting to affect him, hit Mock actually. Because it was like trying to find himself again, he knew who he was. He knew what he wanted to do for the rest of his life, and now the blindness got in the way, and he lost everything in the split of a second. And now he does know where he stands, nor who he is, and what he wants to do with the rest of his life. Because he's gonna be blind. That's not gonna change. Like his eyesight is not gonna get better unless he gets an eye transplant. And that takes a lot of time, so Mock wasn't having it that Day was trying to buy him in the interview. It was like, oh, you think I'm cheap? You think that you can buy me? You think you can have my loyalty? Throwing money at me? No, bitch, that's not how things work. I go with respect. You respect me, I respect you. You don't respect me, I don't respect you. In fact, this man moved closer to Day, and he was like, save your money. And use that money for good medical treatment. Then Mock saw how Day was struggling, being alone and not having his eyesight he can rely on, and it kind of made him sympathize with him, because Day seemed lost in the library, completely lost. We saw his trembling hands, etc. As in, you can not just be lost. Because you need time to adapt to a specific situation in your life, you can be psychologically lost too. As in, he doesn't know what to do anymore with himself. All the pain that he's having on the inside is too much for him, and he is actually giving out that energy. He doesn't know what to do with himself, and seeing that, Mock didn't took pity on him. He sympathizes with him. Because that's exactly what Mog is feeling on the inside, but he doesn't actually want to admit that to anyone, nor to himself. But he's feeling lost too, because his sister was and will always remain a big part of this man's life. And the fact that he doesn't want to give up the car is just because of sentimental value. He wants that car because he knows how much his sister loved it. And that created that special connection to the car. So he is doing that because he loved his sister. Like there is this attachment that keeps Mock from being capable to completely get rid of that car. The same thing is with Day, as in Mock sees or feels that connection to Day in that department. Day was a big athlete. He won a lot of medals. But because of his blindness, he lost that, just like Mock lost his sister. So Mock, in a specific sense, lost that part of himself, as in a part of himself died when his sister died, because she made a huge part of his life. Now that she's not there anymore, he lost that part of his life that included his sister, and that's exactly what Day is going through. Being an athlete, playing badminton, that was a big part of this man's life. He lost that now, so now he needs to find ways to deal with the emptiness that that loss cost him. But, sir, man, เห็นบุรีวะ 
because he smokes. Body. Me too. Sir, me too. Like, I actually feel bad <laughs> thinking that, but it, it's a fact. Non-smokers can't stand the smell of smoke. And even as someone that smokes stops smoking, people that don't smoke smell the stench of the smoke. They smell the stench of the cigarette. And it can make a lot of people nauseous. They can't stand the smell of the cigarettes. And the smell of the cigarette is so powerful that it actually stenches the clothes. Like they need to be washed, even though I don't think that the smell is gonna be capable to disappear by just washing it. My mom said you need to burn it. And no, by all means, if you want to smoke, smoke. It sure as hell is fucking hot, if you ask me. But I, I don't smoke, I can't smoke. You forgot the damn keys. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need the damn key, son. And how would you know? I already say that. <laughs> yes. That means you like him. That means he strikes you somehow. He needs time. I love this, y'all. I love this. Yes, and the, yes. Literally, that's something that I've said to my mom. Like, I was sick back in the day. Like, starting in 2018, I started to get sick. And nobody knew uh, where the sickness came from. Or if I would ever get out of that sickness. And when I needed to go to to the hospital every single time and i was mentally and physically exhausted my mom came to me and she was like don't worry i understand you and i would be like giving her death glares because i'm like you cannot say anything about my condition anything it will just make me mad if you try to say don't worry i understand you you don't you don't have the problem. You don't know how it feels like to have this problem. So how would you know what it truly feels like to be in this physical and psychological torment day in and day out? That that torment is literally falling you into your dreams, not giving you a break. And in that particular situation here, it's the same thing. Mock is like, oh, being blind, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Like, it happens, a lot of people are blind, but I don't think that you should be embarrassed just because you are blind. And Amon said, how would you know? You don't have his problem. How would you know what it feels like to be a worldwide known national athlete and then suddenly having to quit because you're blind? Like his entire career has gone down the hill. He will never ever be capable to play badminton again or any other activity. He's blind. He can't do it anymore. So I would feel embarrassed. In the last episode, I already said that I understood. You don't want to be judged because you're like, oh, I'm the best. I can do so much. And then suddenly you can't anymore because you literally are restricted to this extent. You can do so much, but not more, no matter how hard you try. And if you're a perfectionist, that's already the worst thing that can happen to you. But in most places, you don't want to be judged because... A lot of people are like, oh, you talk big, but nothing came out of that in the end. As in, they believe that he could be the biggest one of them all, and then he became blind. So where has all that greatness gone? He cannot play badminton ever again because he's blind. So where has all that praising himself gotten him? Nowhere, because now his career has ended. He doesn't want to be judged by people that actually believed in him and his talent in being one of the best athletes there could be. Even if it's not Day's fault that he's blind now. But in general, he doesn't want to be judged. And that's the same thing that happened to Mock. Mock was judged because he spent one year in jail. They be judging him. He doesn't want to be judged either. Oh, 
อยู่นี่จ้ะเชี่ยแม่มึงบอกให้ไปไหนก็ไปไงฮิวันส์ทูบีอินดิพเอนเดนต์โซบาดลีดิสแอคชั่นลีเฮิร์ตส์มีนอว์ไอเนียทูอัดรัสต์เดอร์อ t s very very difficult especially for a perfectionist or for someone insanely proud okay it's very difficult to ask for help or to accept help because asking for help is a sign of weakness and nobody wants to be weak so We prefer to psychologically die, trying, than taking the easy way out because it's literally like you admitting that you can do something by yourself, and depending on how proud you are, you can feel shame and embarrassment. This man right here is very, very proud of who he is or of who he was. He was a good athlete. He had friends. We're gonna put that in air quotes because they weren't real friends if they're not here anymore. And he doesn't want to be dependent on anyone. He wants to be independent, but his sickness is actually saying you can't be independent because you will actually need guidance. And as long as they hasn't accepted that he needs help from now on. And that he will have to come to terms with the fact that he could be temporarily or even permanently blind. He will never be capable to psychologically heal, and it's insanely difficult to accept that. First of all, second of all, this man is gonna have a huge problem in the future because we already know that getting an eye donor. For his eye transplant is already difficult enough. It doesn't mean that he won't be capable to see ever again, because as soon as they have an eye donor, because of his money, he will be the first one to get the surgery. But for the time being, he will be temporarily blind because his eyesight is getting worse. So he will need to accept the fact that he will need to rely on someone else that isn't himself because of his condition now, and that's something that Day does not want to do, because right here he would have needed to ask for help. Huh? Because it smells of smoke. Yes, <laughs> Jimmy, I love it. Oh my gosh, he really sees the damn thing. ก็ไหนคุณหมอมีกินบุหรี่สรุปให้ผมหยอดใช่ไหมเนี่ยถ้ามันตายเนี่ยผมไล่คุณออกเออเกี่ยวอะไรวะ Sir มันคุณก็มาช่วยล้างกับผมเออเกี่ยวอะไรอ่ะปลาคุณไม่ใช่ปลาผม Because it's your fish ว่างอยู่ไม่ใช่หรอ Love it อย่างนั้นคุณก็มีเงินมีบ้านมีครอบครัวที่เขาเป็นห่วงคุณอ่ะตาคุณนะแล้วของทุกอย่างของผมไปคนแม่งก็พูดอยู่นั่นแหละว่าเข้าใจเข้าใจอ่ะแต่สุดท้ายอ่ะคุณแม่งก็ไม่มีวันเข้าใจหรอก See เวลาที่คุณส่องกระจกอ่ะ I love this This is literally what I said in the first part of this episode I feel this I feel this on a personal level When I was sick and my mom would always come to me and be like I understand you I get you No you don't You don't You don't know what it feels like to have what I have You can tell me I understand when you actually Have the same problem. You are yelling at me and being like, "I get you, but you can get through this. I got through this too." Then you are less likely to yell at the person because they actually know what it feels like. You find your voice, your own emotions, in the other person's words. That's a different thing. But when you don't actually have the problem yourself, you can't understand what it feels like. This man is blind. He's becoming blind, and as the days go on, he has to accept the fact that he is blind, and he doesn't want to be blind. He wants to go back to his usual self, but he can't. And hearing everyone saying, "Oh, you'll get used to it. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay." How the fuck will you know? You don't know if everything is gonna be okay, and you don't know the mental torture I'm going through every day, seeing how my vision is blurring more and more. Like you don't understand it, and I love this. 
This is realistic. Yes, Chief Mim TV. One. One. Oh no! <laughs> I love this! Now he has the feeling that in the moments of despair, because that's what happened to his sister. In moments of despair, she actually. Here we actually saw it vividly, like Jim MTV's got like bolder. Yes, Jim MTV. She actually slit her wrists. She slit her wrists and let herself die. She actually committed suicide. Because she was in that moment of desperation. She was in the moment of despair. She didn't know what to do anymore. And her anchor was nowhere in sight. So she didn't see any reason to cling to life. So she took her life. And or dear Mock knows that Dave right now is in that moment of desperation. So he's like, no. I can't allow someone else to die because of that moment of desperation. I wasn't there for my sister, but I sure as hell am gonna be there for him. He's willing to knock so many times as long. You know, this scene in general also shows how pure-hearted Mock is. He's like, I wasn't capable to be there for my sister. Maybe this is my opportunity to redeem myself. I wasn't there for my sister, but maybe I can be there for this man now. That face, as if he's hoping that it's him. Handsome, isn't he? <laughs> oh, that's how he sees him. But he can see. <laughs> yeah, you're staring at him and not the fish. They did not have to pull the same shenanigans again. So next episode, Day is gonna be in the middle of the streets again. Let's hope that he's not gonna get run over this time by a car. But yeah, there's literally nothing more I could say to this episode. This episode was so cute. And I can't say how much I love Jimin TV for actually going deeper into people's feelings. I never felt that Jimin MTV actually tackled so many sensitive topics before. But lately, every single series that they're tackling hits me more and more. There's actual real human emotions something that can be troublesome for a lot of people and i love that this is being brought out like this but anyways next episode is gonna be even cuter i feel and let's hope that the understanding between day and mock grows because they actually have great chemistry but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video with me Tell me in the comments below what you think was best and I will see you in another video. Bye!